Just a friendly reminder that the opinions expressed on this show are not worth a Canadian penny, so disregard anything you hear that might get anyone in trouble. And despite some of the great ideas you may hear, don't try them at home. Go to friend's house instead. Welcome to Slam Fire Radio. This is episode 219 for August 8th, 2017. I'm one of your hosts, Adriel. I'm one of your other hosts, Kelly. I'm one of your other hosts, Matthew. And I'm a guest, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brian. You get to come in for the whole thing, right? Yeah. Well, I guess so. He has yeah, no I... choice because I didn't want to edit segments. So I was like, let's do this in order. That way I don't have to edit because it's faster. And so, Brian, mm-hmm. you're on for the whole show. Oh, okay, because the contract documents were very vague about that. Yeah, we are purposefully Purposely. vague to make sure yep. we get what we want. <laughs> Interesting. I'm going to have to talk to my agent about this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he has failed me yet again. And that would be Trevor, right? Because... Who? Tr- tr- yeah, who is this Trevor guy? He's never here when I'm here, so I, know, I right? think I think he's a figment of your imagination. He might be. That's my thought. He Maybe I'm be. just really good with voices. Possible. <laughs> I'm pretty good with voices. <laughs> Trevor, Trevor is the imaginary friend of all the listeners. He doesn't <laughs> actually exist. He's like Pokeroo. Huh. It's Pokeroo. an imaginary place, too. Yeah. Oh, okay. Pokeroo. You know who Pokeroo is, right? I don't, I don't know, know who Pokeroo is. No. Oh, Cultural reference over my head. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, all right. How about Snuffleupagus? But we already know there's no Snuffle- such thing as Snuffleupagus. No such thing. So. He's imaginary, even though oh. I've met him. And I actually worked yeah. with him all throughout SummerSlam, and uh, he's you? awesome to work with. I love working with Snuffy. Yeah, he he seems like a good guy, and I like his Beretta. <laughs> he's pretty, but you know what? He is. He needs a haircut. Like seriously, it's shaggy brown. Right. You're talking about the. <laughs> re- yeah. You're talking about the Jim Henson Snuffle mm. up against. Yes, yeah. He does. Nah. Yeah. Okay. That's okay, Kelly. That's all right. Kelly's off in her own little world. <laughs> We're in ours. <laughs> is that, is all that right. normal? It actually, yes. yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Why don't we roll? Get rolling with this thing. Uh, so just before we get too far... Uh, we're looking for feedback on the podcast. Uh, we've got a quick survey up on the website and on our Facebook uh, page there. So if you have some time, uh, head over to slamfireradio.com or I'll, we'll put a link to the uh, survey in the show notes. We're kind of looking for some feedback in terms of what people like, what they don't like, uh, to help us make the podcast more what more people like. Right. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Head on over there and, uh, and fill it out and... Let us know what you like and what you don't like. Uh, right. The next part here, uh, what we did, did with guns this week is brought to you by the Calgary Shooting Center, Canada's premier firearms retailer. Right now, they're melting down their Mossberg rifles. So like literally? For... <laughs> it's their summer meltdown sale. <laughs> I don't think it's literally, though. No. Oh. Anyways, they've got some, uh, some Mossberg 4x4s and MVPs on sale there. Well, that's, yeah, yeah cool. Cool. Interesting. All right. Um, Brian, you're a guest. Do you want to start us off with uh, what you did in Guns this week? What did I do in Guns this week? Um, <clears throat> well, it kind of leads into the main topic, so I won't talk about it too, too much, but I did shoot a service rifle match this past weekend um, at the Milk Hunt Shooting Center. It was actually, I got to shoot the match twice. We did it the full course of fire on Saturday and then repeated it on Sunday, and that was good because I had a bunch of problems on Saturday. Um, my scope dials slipped and so my zero went for a wonk i had some problems with ammo not feeding and that sort of thing and just just knocking rust off so i got to doing it again on sunday i fixed a bunch of that stuff and now i don't feel quite so horribly um going into nationals next week in fact i feel pretty darn good so that was was positive yeah Yeah. feeling good is always my preference as opposed to feeling bad yeah yeah so that's about it. And then I like, replaced some parts, and I bought some magazines and stuff like that just to get ready for – and packing ammo. And, and theoretically, I'm supposed to be practicing right now for nationals, but I'm here instead. Well, this because, is sort of practicing. Yeah. You know, 
no, practice not in even, your mind. <laughs> nothing the same. No, but I care about the listeners. Right. Unlike yeah, Trevor. Like Trevor. <laughs> well, okay. To be fair, he's actually on vacation, and um, yeah, the, he his summer for a teacher who doesn't work, he works a lot in the summer. Yeah, he does. I will give him credit for that. That's it. That's the last time I'm going to say anything nice. And Matthew, please edit that out. Yeah, I definitely will. I mean, I don't normally edit, but that I'm willing to do. There you go. <laughs> so that's it for me. Cool. Matthew, what about you? I am rebuilding the deck on my house. Does that count right. as gun yeah, related use stuff? Did you, you use a nail gun? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I'm not using a nail gun, but I am exercising excellent trigger control on my cordless drill. That's good. Yeah. So that's... Don't you find that like with, with drills and any other tools that have... Um, Triggers? Kind of, Well, kind of a pistol grip. You yep. tend to stand there with your quote-unquote trigger finger alongside the slide when you're not do. doing stuff. Yeah. I certainly yeah, do. Don't. I even do it with a stapler. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I don't think it's a bad habit to have. So. It really isn't, no. Yeah. But it's funny. I have to check myself and say, you know, not yell at people for having their trigger finger on the trigger because it, it is just a cordless drill. <laughs> it's true. Because it, it is it, your instincts like trigger finger. Oh, wait. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> And make sure you're not sweeping yourself with those power tools. Oh, it's hilarious. I totally don't do that either. I'm like, <laughs> you know, someone walks in front of me, gun goes down. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Ingrained in the gun much? Maybe. Mm-hmm. Again, good habits to have. Why break they it? Are. No, I haven't done anything gun related. I've been doing a lot of house related things. So um, I didn't get to talk about SummerSlam though because I wasn't on last week, but Trevor covered it quite nicely. And really, the only extra thing I wanted to say, I already said, and that was uh, working with Snuffy and just everybody else there. Um, the, you know, everybody pitched in and, and did a fantastic job. Anybody who showed up to help did an amazing job. And. Um, I don't think they listen, so I won't blow too much smoke. But uh, it's all it's all warranted for sure. Trevor Trevor spoke very highly of everybody, and it was it was definitely evident in uh, what I saw. So I was I was happy to to be a part of that. And Trevor did a great job putting on the match. The match itself was great. Meeting up with everybody again, the people, the regulars that come to SummerSlam is you know the guys from Quebec and Ontario, Nova Scotia, and and uh, you know Sue Lookout. There's a guy from there. He's he's pretty cool, I guess. Whatever. So uh, cool. Yeah, no, it was it was well, a too. good time. What's that? How'd you shoot? Uh, well, mostly um, good stance, good grip, sight picture, trigger press, <laughs> old trigger. Yeah. Okay, Matthew, how was your performance in your own mind <laughs> relative to your own expectations? Well, here's the thing: I ended up higher up the chart than I expected, and I didn't think I shot as well as I could have. I shot the That's- pre-match. With well, I didn't shoot it with Trevor. Trevor didn't actually shoot the pre-match. Well, he did, but on staggered days because he wasn't feeling so well. His his back was out, um, so that's completely understandable. But I shot the entire match in one day, so all sixteen stages. And it took us twelve hours to do. Wow! It. So it was a long day, and by the end of the day, I was dragging, and I was not shooting as as well as I could have in my mind. However, that being said. Out of the 69 people in my division, I ended up 11th. Oh, good for you. So I was not disappointed with that, except for I was 10th until the last squad brought their score sheets in. Oh. <laughs> and then and, we have practice and, score, right? <laughs> so I was keeping keeping tabs on my myself and my position in the in the the event, and so I'm like, all right. I'm I'm in tenth place. That means I'm top ten. I can say I'm top ten. It's amazing. And the last tablet showed up, and I resynced, and dang it, dropped to eleventh. <laughs> no, no, your ranking went up to eleven. It goes oh, right. all the way to eleven. Yeah, I went that's... all the way. It goes all the way to eleven. <laughs> so I shot. I mean, there was one stage. Well, two stages that I was quite happy with. Um, one of them is on my YouTube channel. The other one didn't get recorded, unfortunately, but it was the the boat. I actually won the boat in my division. I was first place out of everybody on the oh. boat stage. So I was very happy with that turnout. And I did really well. I think I ended up third or fourth in a second in another stage that uh, that I felt that I shot quite well on. But the rest of them, I was just sort of, I felt like I just sort of did mediocre. So um, 
I, I guess that's good because that means if I feel like I'm if, if I feel like I can do better, I probably can, which means I can probably maybe break top ten next year. So that's my goal next year is top ten. This year, when I looked at how many people were um, were signed up for the event, I wanted top quarter. So I think it was 18th or better was the was what I wanted. Then I got 11th. So I'm I'm very pleased with where I ended up, uh, but uh, I think I could have done better. So we'll see how it goes next year. Cool. Uh, quick Very question: cool. with yeah. with all the Summer Slams you've been to, is there enough of like the same people in your division that you can kind of compare how you've done against them year to year? You would or- think so, but I'm really bad with names, so oh, it's fair. probably quite possible. But I'm I don't know. <laughs> I, that, I I know the fair. people by face, and I, the thing is, I don't know if all of them are shooting production or standard or whatever. I don't really keep track of that stuff. I don't really rank right. myself against other specific people. Okay, yeah, just yeah. overall. Okay, cool. So I, I don't like well, and it's not even because I think it's because Trevor talks about how you don't want to. I want to beat so and so because then all you end up doing is becoming better than so and so instead of becoming as good as you can be. I don't do yeah. it for that reason. I I'm lazy and disinterested slightly. So I <laughs> I agree that you're lazy. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> So, yeah, no, I, I I couldn't tell you if I'm doing any okay. better or worse than other people. So, all right, but, cool. cool. Yeah, it was a good match. I I did enjoy that. So, um, I guess uh, I guess that brings us to Kelly because we're gonna make Adriel go last. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. All right, I haven't been on for two weeks. So, two weeks ago we did a maple seed on private land, and we did it for the CCFR just as a thank you to them, and we had uh, six people show up. Some people show up, and it was really well um, received. So it was awesome. We had a great time. That's cool. Uh, yeah, that was on the Saturday. So on the Sunday, we shot uh, um, the pictures for the CCFR calendar. <laughs> yeah, your notes say, on Sunday, we shot the CCFR calendar. Really? Yeah. <laughs> a lot mm. of holes in it? <laughs> we put it up, and we just <laughs> shot it. No. The girls came down. We had five girls, six girls come to, uh, to Kingston, and uh, Rick... Kedebeck, who is our official photographer for all of our events, he actually did the photography. He did an amazing job, by the way. Rick always so you, pulls off amazing shots. He is yeah. a pro. That dude, I mean, I, what is he a professional photographer? He, well, he, he actually is. He well, has there you a, go. No he wonder a, he's He has so a good. business with the photography as well. So, And he donated his time uh, to the calendar. That, uh, so I just wanted to give him a shout out for that because yeah, of the fact that what? Uh, Wait a minute. He he donated his time to go take pictures of lovely ladies for the day. Yeah. Beautiful Big ladies. sacrifice. Yeah. Big sacrifice, Rick. Yeah. <laughs> no. Sorry. Edit them later. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so the other thing that we got to do is after the calendar shoot, we shot firearms because why not? You know, all of the firearms are there, so let's just shoot them. Yeah, so not? we got to sh- – yeah shoot all kinds of different things uh and if you check out the calendar you might see what we shot as well so you actually have brian i've already told the other guys that they have to buy a calendar so when the calendar comes out you're gonna have to buy one so uh what else did we do oh last weekend we traveled to ohio uh so when trevor was saying well kelly didn't have a really good excuse for not being on last weekend uh yeah we were getting up at 5 a.m at m and heading to ohio and we had to pack the car so that's, so what that's it was their definition of a good excuse well yeah okay i just i, mean, I just want to know where the bar is because i want to know <laughs> you know how to get under it all right <laughs> uh so we traveled all day and we got to ohio at about five or six o'clock at night we did arrange that up but we did arrive a little too late to have uh, a fun day uh, usually when we get there we have uh one of our friends donald comes out and he last time he brought out a 50 cal um but uh this time he wasn't able to to get there so we didn't shoot any big guns but that's okay uh, Saturday and Sunday, we did an apple seed. We actually instructed at it. It was uh, Kevin and I, as well as our friend um, uh, Corvette, who is the shoot boss. And did you say so Corvette? Corvette is his name. Yeah. Like it, that's his real name? No, that's his forum name. Oh, okay. Cool. Real name Steve. Well, Anyways, I, I, mean, I didn't really. I was just curious if somebody actually named their child Corvette, and I was like, okay, that's interesting. I'm so sure after there, this, there I'm is. Sure there is. Anyway. Probably. If, if there's yeah. people named Mercedes, then yes, there's got to be good, some. Good point. Although I think the car was named after a girl, not the other way around. 
die because really Mercedes appears in Shakespeare, and I'm pretty sure they didn't yeah. have the car back in the day. You'd be surprised. You're right. I, I would be surprised. I would literally be surprised. <laughs> oh, what a comeback. <laughs> Shakespeare on the – anyways, Stratford. And there's yeah, I used to go to that. out like awesome. Shakespeare references and you're like, yeah, you might be surprised. <laughs> Touche, sir. Touche. <laughs> Uh, so Saturday and Sunday we did the apple seed, but uh, we when we went down there we were staying with our friend uh, Brian Brian Sheets, uh, and we also got to see Jason um, Groves as well. With their Valkyrie Defense. They were holding a class on the Saturday, uh, but we went out to dinner with them. We saw our friend Red Ranch as well, so it was great. We got to see a lot of people that uh, that um, you all are friends with as well. Yeah. But uh, we actually got to meet them and spend time with them repeatedly, unlike, well, Trevor. (laughs) (laughs) That's all I did with guns this week. That's it? That's all? Yeah. Gosh. I guess we'll accept it. Whatever. Yeah. Adriel, I guess guess it's your turn. I don't know why I, like, Kelly, you're supposed to say Adriel, it's your turn. Oh, yeah. Adriel, it's your turn. (sighs) Yeah. I'm just cleaning a pistol right now. It's The barrel's just filthy. Uh, I shot a, a three-gun match last week. Um, yeah, it was good. I RO'd uh, one of the stages, designed some of the, the uh, stages, um, had 37 people out, which is quite a bit. That's for, good. For a level three-gun match, yeah. Nice. I got third in my division. Nice. Which, yeah, given how like people were shooting, like we had a couple of good shooters have some good days out, and I, I kind of... Didn't have a good day on my pistol, so, you know, that's that's okay. Uh, I'm going to have to work on my pistol accuracy more for uh, for next time. Um, I had someone say, are you the Adriel? Which is kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> now, which, which reference, from Hunting Gear Guy or Slam Fire? Uh, well, he knew, he knew me from uh, YouTube YouTube videos and that kind oh, of okay, thing. Oh, okay, cool. So, Hunting so, Gear Guy. That's he, awesome. So, he's not a listener and all that. Okay. All right. <laughs> So, yeah, he, so it basically doesn't count, Adriel. It, it's you know yeah. what you can't mention it on this show unless it has to do with this show. Okay, yeah. pretty sure All that's a rule. Did, reread yeah. your contract, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's in the social media policy. Yes, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> that is pretty cool, though. I love it when people uh, recognize other people from social media and stuff. It's it's just fun. Yeah. Except for when it gets yeah, creepy. I mean, like, you- well, sometimes it gets creepy. Not all the time. Well, when they stalk you. Hey. Yeah. Sometimes I appreciate it. I haven't had any stalker. stalkers yet, so yet. Um, I, I think I'm going to get there. Wait for it. <laughs> so you good. you obviously didn't notice me stalking you at the charity shoot. Good. I, my, I was subtle. That's <laughs> excellent. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that was a three-gun match. Uh, let's see. What else? Uh, I'm going to be working a demo day this weekend. We're having like a range demo day. I was trying to get out of it, but uh, I think uh, uh, they, they need the people, and I, I should be giving back to yeah. make sure that uh, you know that uh, it's going to be a success. So I'll so be, it's just I'll sort of like I, a, and I sorry sorry go ahead. I was going to say it's sort of like a open to the public kind of day where people can come out and kind of see what it's all about. See what the range is all about. Try three gun. Try server service rifle try cowboy action try all of it and then you know they're, they're the, the range is trying to sell memberships but right. we're also trying to get people interested in the leagues and that kind of thing too nice. right so that's kind cool. of uh, kind of all of the above uh and i i told a whole bunch of people to go so <laughs> I should probably you should go. be there for that <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah exactly so uh i think i'm gonna bring i know they need a pistol for three guns so i'll probably bring my fns uh i might bring one of those uh uh, West Rifle 7.62s for the service rifle part, just in case anyone wants to shoot with something that looks kind of like an AK. Uh, but really, they'd be better off with the ARs. Um, they really would be, but they'd still have something cool to shoot. Well, yeah, cool looking. Yeah, yeah different looking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then I've got a three-gun match in Saskatoon the weekend after that I'm starting to gear up for. That's, uh, I don't know, I guess you could call that like a major match kind of a thing. Uh, so I'm um, I'm getting a bunch of ammo prepared and, you know, straightening out my guns. Um, I had a couple of things I had to test over last weekend. Uh, my, my shotgun lifter had been welded. 
and I was I wanted to make sure that, that was reliable. <laughs> it's it's, it's nice when them. your equipment actually works after you after you you know work on it. So yeah, definitely test that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, and it was only the second time I've I've had out. I've got I've got a new bolt and BCG uh, on my AR. So it was the second time I had that out. Um, and I guess the skateboard tape on the pistol, but like like that shouldn't cause any reliability issues. I, I don't know. I might have hated it. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So it was good. It was good. Really good for te- that kind of testing. Uh, sometimes when you weld the forks on a lifter on a shotgun, it won't center the shell properly anymore, and your shell might uh, uh, might hit the uh, uh, kind of the front of the chamber on the on the way forward. So it was it was good to test it out. Uh, it worked flawlessly. So I'm I'm pumped for the uh, uh, the Prairie Fire shoot in Saskatoon uh, that'll be on the 26th Sweet. and 27th. Sweet. Yeah, uh, I guess I think that's it. Uh, why don't we go on to uh, upcoming events? Uh, I'll just do the th- well. I already mentioned a couple of the three gun things here, but uh, uh, the uh, Prince Albert uh, three gun is this weekend. There is going to be a, a Raz, a Wild Rose action shooting three gun uh, match this weekend. Northwest three gun, and there's one more. Nope, nope. That's uh, there's also a Medicine Hat. Rifle and Revolver Club uh, match this weekend. Uh, next weekend, there's uh, going to be the Mighty Peace Three Gun, uh, the Three Gun Outlaw Shoot at the Rock Cut, and Prairie Fire Classic Multi Gun in Saskatoon. That's going to be really big and fun. Um, in terms of other events, we've got some sporting clays news here. Uh, the ASCA annual general meeting is going to be held at the Provincial Shoot in Lloydminster. Uh, at Hidden Ridge, Saturday night, right after the shooting is complete. The meeting should run approximately 30 minutes. We have some retiring directors this year and looking for people interested to help promote the sport across Alberta. If you're interested, please get a hold of... It says me there. I'm not sure who me is. But it's you. Of the it's ACM. you. No, no. Yes, make, make sure get a hold check. of me. <laughs> yeah, get a hold of Adriel. Adriel. Yeah. I'm pretty sure this came from Jason Philp. Yes. Yeah. I, it might have been from him. It might have been something that he passed on from the president. All right. that, though. Or present your nomination that day. Uh, the raffles on guns getting close to the date of August 19th. Yes, that's very close. If you want a ticket, you can get a hold of, again, the Sporting Clays uh, exec or see them in Lethbridge uh, this weekend or Lloyd in two weeks. I guess that's this weekend. Uh, you there's better an buy it quick this weekend because the date's yep. uh, <laughs> Saturday. <Coming> <laughs> yeah. uh, there's an athlete development grant available for residents of Alberta who travel within Alberta for their respective shooting sport. This grant is provided by the AFSS and is available to ASCA shooting community for the 2017 year. They're looking for applicants that travel to apply as they see the need. Applicants awarded the grant will be selected based on travel distance, amount, and need for assistance. So that's kind of interesting. That uh, looks like there's uh, some money coming from the government to uh, to help with, with travel and, uh, and the shooting sports. That's cool. That's really cool. It's nice to see the government... Uh stepping up like that it sort of adds a legitimacy to to the sports too right whenever you see the government actually helping fund that Mm -hmm. sort of thing so that's that's really cool yeah absolutely why don't we head on to the news uh the first one here is uh from caliber magazine um anyone want to take this one um you all know about it you all know about it this This is is, yeah uh, yeah so this is this is from this is from the public safety committee or who's this from again well, there, we've been, uh, as I say we, as in like the CCFR, and there's been a few others trying to pressure uh, CFAC, the CFAC, uh, or yeah. Canadian Firearms Advisory Committee, to, uh, I don't know, like Take. learn about firearms. Before, yeah, before. Firearms yeah maybe get a license. Yeah, if you're going yeah. to make yeah. laws about our guns, maybe have a gun license so that you know what you're talking about, at least a little bit. Yeah, like don't, you don't need to buy one or anything. Just, no. you know, learn, like if, if you're going to, Make comments about the uh, the training or something like that. You know, try it out. Take take the train. It's a it's a weekend, right? It's not a lot of uh, commitment. I'm sure they get paid for this uh, to they be on would. this committee, right? I'm sure they would they would get paid to go, even go take this course. Yep. Um. Anyways, that's insensitive, so we can't ask them to. It, do that. Yeah, it's insensitive to do that. Isn't that ridiculous? Yeah. So it was it was uh, Scott Bardsley. It's uh, Ralph Goodell's press secretary. He, he's he's the that, that's where this is coming from. It would be insensitive and inappropriate to require uh, that. That's well, 
Well, it, it's in her. Uh, it's yeah. in regards. It's in regards it's, to the uh, yeah, Natalie Provost. Yes, who oh, okay. is the spokesperson for the Poly uh, Solvent, which is a group uh, going back to the Polytechnique as well. Uh, um, so it, they see well, you, it as being insensitive. Well, you know what? Or, I didn't read this completely before. I only read. Uh, I skimmed it. You know what? Maybe if the rest of the I don't know. I'm kind of torn on this, and, and right now I, I'm just, just going to put this out there and say that I am forming an opinion as I speak this sentence. <laughs> okay. So, so take so. this as it is, but this is a survivor of the Polytechnique shooting, and yes. in order for her to uh, – so is she on the board Yes. Yes. She is. Okay. So if she okay. So they're saying it would be inappropriate to for for her to be required to have a firearms license. I sort of get that. I sort of do because she ha- was in a uh, she's a survivor of a shooting event. I, I sort of get she, she might be gun shy. I, that's fine. Why is she on the board though? If or on the committee? If if she's okay, I, I guess that you you want a victims. Uh, do, you, insight, do you know of a lot of uh, do you know of a lot of victims on the traffic safety board? No, they have like car crash victims. And, no, not and... really. Like <laughs> maybe it's insensitive to ask her to be on that committee. So instead of saying it's, exactly, it's, it's insensitive to okay, we're we're all up in arms saying oh they should have a firearms license in order to be on the committee. Oh, I agree with that. But if maybe you're a victim of a shooting event, maybe you shouldn't be on that committee in the first place. So the reason that she's on the committee is because of the fact she's an anti-gun. Right. She's a, she's a advocate for no guns, right? Yeah. So that's why they actually have her on. So they want her on there because they want her to be able to say we have people who say we should have more strict gun laws. I mean, obviously, right. that's what the liberals want. They want more strict gun laws. And so they're going to find the best people to kind of push that agenda. I get that. My I, thoughts are if it's a balance, you're going to have somebody on there who's an advocate for gun laws. As, which, or not, sorry, not gun laws, but you're going to have an advocate for gun rights. That's so right. But do we have balanced. that? We don't no. have that. Well, they, so they have, uh, I think they have a sports shooter on there, don't they? They have a, two Olympians. Doesn't necessarily mean that they're advocates for gun rights. Doesn't necessarily mean that, no. But at least there are, sh- yeah, that's true. I, I mean, I would like to see, I'd like to see somebody who would advocate, yeah, exactly, you know, like somebody from the CCFR. Like so- somebody yep. who is definitely a gun rights advocate. That would so, make sense to offset. I mean, you want to balance, right? You fine. This this lady who is uh, the in the shooting event there. Sure, she's she's there. Fine, whatever. But at least have the other side of the coin too. Right. Part of it is that you cannot be a lobbyist and be on this committee. Right. So when we talk about maybe somebody from the CC, we do have a lobbyist. That's same. true. But so I mean, there's there are other people who are I'm sure would be willing to be on this advisory yeah. committee. Yep. But I'm. I, I know. I just uh, go ahead. I just think that if if there's someone on the committee who is so traumatized by firearms that they can't take a course in firearms, they maybe shouldn't. they're not the, the person, right person to be providing a holding a committee spot. I can see them making deputations to the committee. Sure. But if if they feel so traumatized by this that it it terrifies them, then they're not going to be able to be rational. Right. In my my view, so. I can't That's disagree sort of with an that admission that this yeah. is an admission by Goodall that this person is not qualified to be on the committee, in my opinion. Yeah. I don't know what qualification has it has to do with it, though. They don't seem to be too bothered by it. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, I did want to say something. Like, the position that she was put into uh, should never have happened to anybody. So I can understand her being traumatized by Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I get and, that 100%. And to yeah. ask her to get a firearms license and to work with firearms, you know, I get that. That she doesn't want to do that. And I fully support her not doing that. That's fine. Right. But at the but same also- time, if she's going to be involved in making new laws for Canada that have pertain to guns, she, maybe she shouldn't be on that committee. The, the problem is that you and all of us are going to be per- – Quite likely, subject to restrictions on firearms because of what she's afraid of. Right. Yep, I know that yep. that therein lies the problem. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't have somebody who is involved in a motorcycle accident coming up with new laws for motorcycles because well, they're going to say, "Well, no motorcycles," because they scare the crap out of me. 
Yeah, exactly. That's that's yeah, that's a good analogy. So anyway, yeah, boondoggle. That's a that's a good word there. That's a third word in the sentence there in the uh, <laughs> in the article. Boondoggle. I like it because it's fitting. Yeah, it'd be nice to actually have a balance, though. Uh, yeah. Yep. So if we have somebody who's advocating for gun rights, then we should also that person that's there should be, you know, going in and talking to survivors too. So I'm just saying, let's put it out there. Yeah. Are they listening to us? Not really. No. So. Yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. Hardly anybody uh, listens to us. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Apparently, you know, none of Adriel's friends. They all think that he's the the hunting gear guy. The hunting gear guy. <laughs> 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 all right. Uh, all right. Let's uh, let's go on to some more serious news here. The next uh, article we have here is Florida man shot his junk after claiming to sit on a loaded gun. Hard hitting. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that, you uh, said more serious news. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you read the headline correctly. A man shot his junk. That was not a typo. A uh, 38 year old Florida man uh, by the name of Cedric Jelks. Yeah, sure. Uh, shot himself in the penis after sitting on his loaded handgun. Uh, sadly, there isn't very much more information. Do, do you want to actually? So in the quote, keep go, this yeah, keep any, going. Any bet it was a 1911. <laughs> <laughs> That's in the article, folks. So it's not us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, All right. Yeah. Well, where did this happen? This is in the states. Okay, Florida. Florida. All right. So it doesn't really pertain to Canada, but still hilarious. No. All right, oh. All right then. Just a quick one. Just yeah. a quick little aside. Uh, just, uh, just, hey. So, Did so quickly, um, everybody make sure you safety your firearm before you sit on it. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not aim it at your penis. <laughs> Just say. Oh. Okay. Quickly, quickly. The next one. Uh, next one. Okay. <laughs> no, uh, just, the next. Sorry. Uh, go ahead. Kelly. Did, we don't have it on here, but did anybody see the article or the video of the guy that had, was shooting and had, um, ammo in his pockets and it. Ooh, I did see oh, that. Oh yeah. Yeah. We don't have that on there, but do you want to talk, talk about, about that, that for just a second? Sure. It's, okay. oh, it's so weird, but yeah, go ahead. Uh, t- take us in. Okay. <laughs> so everybody's seen the video. Uh, what do you think actually happened? Because he had ammo he, and it, it, it showed the video. He was, he was, he was doing an indoor shooting competition and he holstered his gun. He had an arrow right beside him and the arrow said, I don't know what happened. And he, had a pocket full of uh, ammo and one went off. Yeah, it went off Didn't... while he was shooting, right? Yeah. While he was yeah. shooting. Yeah, it wasn't after he holstered or during holstering. It was while he was engaged was sh- in the course yes. of firing. Yeah, there yeah. was a live round in his pocket that went off by itself. Now, mm-hmm. some people speculate maybe he had a battery in his pocket because if you put a 9 volt up to the edge of a, of a brass cartridge, it'll heat up to mm. the point where it'll go off. I've, I've heard that. I'm not sure if it's true or not. I've never done it myself, but that's a possibility. Also why haven't poss- you done that yourself? I, I don't know why I you. haven't done that myself. I need to work on this. I expect that kind of shenanigans from you. That will become a new video, I'm sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't know why it wouldn't at this point, to be honest okay, with carry you. On. So, yes, all right. Carry but on. here's another plausible possibility. What if he shot some steel or something hard enough to cause a very small fragment to ricochet back and just one in a billion chance that little, ri- that little hit. piece hit the primer and it set it off? Through his pocket, though? Like, he was wearing, like, cargo shorts. That's true. Uh, well, I mean, it could have been coming back fast enough that it would have hurt him, but instead it hit the bullet instead, and it went off. I mean, I've I've been hit by slag by people shooting steel before, and it, it hits pretty hard. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I don't know if that would be it, but I'm just, I'm just trying to come up with some sort of reason why that would happen. Now, here's a third possibility that just popped into my mind. What if it that was... was huh? It was ghosts. It was ghosts. Yeah, no, that's not it. <laughs> Aliens is what I was going to say. No, what if he what if he had a dud earlier in the match? Uh-huh. And popped that round out and stuck it in his pocket and then it finally just went off like a, a super long miss- hang fire. But usually yes. isn't it like within 30 seconds if it doesn't go off within 30 seconds it's not gonna. Have you guys like what's the longest ha- hang fire you've ever had? The longest I've had is like a second. Yeah. Same here. I've never had to hang fire longer than a second. Yeah. Yeah. So I've never had one. Yeah. I've seen one, and it was actually about three or four seconds. But yeah. Mm. So, but even still, three or four seconds. This was in his pocket for two whole stages before it finally went off. Yeah. So I don't think it was that, but 
I don't know, re- irregardless, or regardless, as the case may be. Um, unregardless. Unregardless. There, you nailed it. Non-regardless? No. The, the, yeah, there you the, go. The, the, right. the, t- the takeaway from here is a live round went off in his pocket and he wasn't hurt. Not in the slightest. He didn't even look like he really noticed it until no. later. So yeah. that's just no. to show, um, you know, rounds going off that are not inside of a gun simply aren't dangerous. They, they, I mean, you might you might scratch your eyeball if it hits you in the eyeball kind of thing, but that'd be about put it. Put your eye out. Yeah. Well, well, I don't it, know if it would even put your eye out. <laughs> well, he if, ruined a perfectly good pair of cargo shorts. Well, he put a small mm-hmm. hole in it. I would, <laughs> I'd continue to wear them. <laughs> <laughs> but but honestly, just looking at the physics, if if a round discharges and it's not in a chamber, the brass is a lot lighter than the bullet, so the brass is going to go yeah. further and faster than the projectile. That's is. right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I'd like to know how that happened, right. why it happened the way it did. But uh, yeah. Anyway, it was an interesting video. We'll for never sure. know. We'll yeah, like never not. know. No. Uh, next up, we've uh, so the CCFR put out four new explainer videos, kind of like one right after the other. I don't know if any of you guys have had a chance to take a look at these, but uh, I really like the titles on them. One's called Ban the AR-15. Another one's called Save Lives by Limiting Magazine Capacity. The other one's called Ban All Guns. That's the answer, right? And then the fourth one is Gun Control. Do we need more? I love it because it gets people who who would be on the other side of the fence to see the title and go, ooh, I'd watch that. And they mm-hmm. click on it, and all of a sudden they're getting bombarded with pro-gun <laughs> facts, logic, Ugh, and oh, facts. facts. <laughs> I'm sure no, the like watch them. time really on those videos right. is like 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Brad they're, they're really job. tight. I like them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. No, I like it. That's great. I should share all those all over the place. We should. That's what they're for. Cool. Yeah. Cool. We'll do we that. Should. We should share them on our page or uh, oh. other people's pages. Oh, yeah. They'll be in the show or notes, right, Adriel? Ran- random yep. people's pages. I already got them in there. Perfect. You demand. Cool. The new next one stuff. we have here is uh, new gun stuff. So the first one is a new stock that's new to Canada. This is the Fortis LA stock. Now, uh, I don't know if you've seen this, Brian, but this is a, uh, it's a very lightweight stock. There's some carbon fiber on there, a little bit of plastic. Uh, it's an aluminum and carbon carbon fiber AR-15 stock, and it costs as much as a brand new AR-15. <laughs> well, a, a Norinco AR-15, right? Well, it's six hundred dollars. <laughs> really? It's six hundred dollars. You can buy one of those Smith and Wesson things for six fifty, can't you? Yep. Ouch! But it's a cool cool stock. It's well okay. So there there is such a thing as people building like two three thousand dollar ars that are really cool and if you're if you're building a really cool ar either something that's ultra lightweight like one of those uh i think f1 firearms makes some some really ultra lightweight stuff um this would be like a good addition for something like that because it is a very lightweight stock uh 15.8 ounces that's oh man super light well i mean it's just less than a pound 16 ounces in a pound yeah. Okay, so a pound. It's right. always a pound. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyways. Anyways. I like it. I like the thing. look of it. If it didn't cost $600, I'd love to see that in the end of my gun. I, I mean, I like it. It looks good. It looks clean, lightweight. Um, I don't know. I, what, do you, what do you have on yours? Magpul CTR? Magpul? <laughs> Surely you jest. Try again. Try lower in the bucket. <laughs> mm. I've got mil, I've, remember, mil spec yeah. six position carbine. Remember stock. the one that we almost bought there in Alberta for twenty bucks? Yeah, yeah. That's pretty much what I've got. <laughs> <laughs> the cheapest collapsing buttstock you can find. Well, those work too. It works. It does. Works just fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The next one we have here is the Smith and Wesson MMP15 VTAC2. So. Their MP15 is uh, like they've, they've got that sport version. That's kind of like their more inexpensive version. This mm-hmm. is not the cheap version. This is the upper version. That's more of a, a three gun ready kind of a rifle. So it's got a 16 inch barrel, uh, five hour rifling, uh, which I don't know if is uh, Brian. Is that a, a common thing in, in upper end barrels? The five hour rifling. I know it is in in bolt action rifles, but ARs. What's five hour? I don't, I it's don't the think rifling. it's a thing. 
it's not a thing in um, in air barrels that I have seen. So mm. I don't know, and I don't know enough about it. Um, next time I'm talking with Mr. Stacy with International Barrels, we will I'll bring that up because, in fact, we might have covered that on the episode we did with him recently. By memories escaping me, so mm. yeah, it's that's just a, a type of rifling. It's a it's a different, newer style of rifling that's uh, that's supposed to be more accurate. So what do they? What are, like, it's it's. Do you know it's how like what the difference very is? Dust, like, very dust on mm. there, and uh, yeah, I don't know enough about it, and I would look it up so I could um, come up with an answer for you, but my gonna, internet. My internet has decided the internet squirrel is on strike. Apparently, so gotcha. no, it's it's just the style of uh, of rifling. Instead of having like a, a square rifling, it's more angled kind of thing on on the on the way out. All right. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, it's not, yes, I it's just not pulled up a sharp. picture of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, interesting. Yep. That's going to make great audio. You looking at pictures? I'm looking on. at a pic. So imagine, <laughs> if you will. Matthew looking at a picture and sh- stroking his chin and going, hmm, I see what the difference is there now. Interesting. So that's, that's what I've just like, done. That's square kind of a thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, back to this three-gun rifle here. Uh, it's got a 13-inch uh, battle rail uh, alpha, alpha handguard, uh, two-point sling, uh, a light mount, which I don't know why you need that in three-gun, but it's kind of cool. And a Viltor uh, stock on there, so it's kind of like ready to go out of the box, kind of a thing for uh, for three gun. Mm, mm, mm. What's next here? Have you seen the uh, the Turkish high powers that Canada Ammo's bringing in? Whoa, wait, what? They're calling them their Dominion Arms. Oh, was it thirty three, thirty five? Dominion Arms D eight thirty fives. And they're basic. Yeah, they're yeah. high powers. Wait a minute, I thought Dominion Arms was Chinese. Dominion Arms is just their house brand, and they uh, make American, uh, Turkish, and what was the other one? Chinese. So there's three different countries that they choose to white okay. label from. It doesn't look wow. like a bad rendition of it. No. no. I don't Not know horrible. much about the high power, but... I wonder if they're available with what, am- Ambi controls. Why? Yeah. Who cares? Oh wait, you're uh, a lefty. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so that hurts me. That cuts me it, so deep. It doesn't. Your your skin is way thicker than that by now. Oh no, you'd be surprised. No, <laughs> no, I'm I'm petty and and weak that way. Sweet. Anyways, Canada Ammo has those uh, Turkish high powers. They got them in uh, uh, white or black. How much are they going for? Uh, they are not 700 bucks. Yeah. 700 bucks for the blued one and 730 for the stainless steel. Yeah. Eh. Eh. Yeah. I don't want one. I don't really, I'm not particularly partial to the high powers myself, but, uh, I'm more of a high point kind of guy. And a clock (laughs) kind of a guy, right? Uh. All right, the next one we have here, I Run Guns has some police trade-in Glocks for $606 Canadian. Sweet. There's, there's something more your speed. Yeah. I yeah. like Glocks. Yeah. 200 Glocks in stock, they said. That's a rhyme. That's a lot of Glocks. They have 200 yeah. of them for 600 bucks. That's not a bad mm-hmm. price. Yeah. What, what do used Glocks go for these days? Eight. Eight? <laughs> man, man they're nuts, they do. They're so expensive. Oh, man. These it's things like, are going to be sold out uh, in, like, minutes. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, if you want to Glock, yeah. <laughs> get on that really quick. Absolutely. Come uh, to three next... mags, too. Yeah. Glock mags. Yeah, I mean, the, so Glock mags are, are the best because you can get either the Glock mag, you can get the Magpul mag. I mean... My mags for the FNS are seventy five bucks. What like what do those Magpul mags go for? Twenty five? Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. I could you could get three mags for the price of one of mine. <laughs> uh, yeah. This next one is uh, is a pretty good deal here too. Is the CZ Shadow Two, 80th anniversary edition? Mm. Um. Okay. Pretty. It's pretty. It's, I would disagree. <laughs> <laughs> On a Not fundamental thing, eh? level. It's 
got a filigree no. play. No. It's got that's a bling no. bling. No, it's that. highly polished, engraved Shadow Two. No, mm-hmm. for fifty five hundred dollars with a grip. What is that on that grip? I just the uh, bottom of a magazine. I think it's magazine. No, no, the grip itself is oh. kind of like leopard print. I don't know. It's yeah, it's got some sort of funky. Something. Maybe it's bird's eye maple that's been done black, stained black, or something. Maybe I don't know. Green <laughs> maple wood plate. <laughs> there you go. So fifty five hundred dollars. If you want one, you can go and check it out. I wouldn't. That's, you know, that's a decent little like three gun pistol. You just run around yeah. with that and grind it into the dirt and yeah, get, get it rained on and drop it in the ground. Yeah. Dump barrels and that kind of thing. Anyways, moving on. No. Uh, five, the last one we have here is the uh, <laughs> the Sig MPX carbine pistol is in at Wanstalls. Now this Wanstalls? looks cool. Wait, yeah, this I think is, is it Wanstalls or Wan- it's it's Wanstalls. Al Flaherty. It's what Al, I yeah, I was gonna say, there? is it Wanstalls, Al- Wanstalls, or Al Flaherty's? I don't know which one it is. I'm pretty sure it's Al Flaherty's, but oh uh, yeah, sorry guys, <laughs> it's Al Flaherty's. Al Flaherty's. <laughs> that would be fun to play with. It's a very small, compact, basically. It, it reminds like me of the MP5, MP5 kind of thing. thing. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Imagine Wire it stock. Was, imagine it was non restricted. Yeah. Hmm. What would I do with it if it was non restricted? I would hunt rabbits with it. <laughs> Tact, it tactically. It's a 9 mil, so. Yeah. That'd be yeah. Fun. It'd I'd be fun. That. It's twenty four hundred dollars. So. <laughs> but I would rather buy two of these than that thing we looked at a minute ago. The CZ Shadow. Yeah, it's the one. <laughs> <laughs> the thing. I could get Blinked two of these one. for the same price as that thing, and I would, I'd just dual wield these and and still come out ahead because that other thing was terrible. <laughs> it's ugly. Did you even look uh... at it? No. So you're saying okay. you're not a fan of it? Well, I mean, I'm on the fence. Mm. Okay. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> These MPXs are cool, though. If I had an extra yeah. twenty five hundred bucks kicking around, I would probably not buy one still, but I'd be tempted. <laughs> yeah, you're more of a non restricted kind of a guy, right? I kind of am, but look, this thing is. Like, I love the MP5, but we can't get those. Not even, not even close. They're prohibited by name. This is this is pretty close to that. It yep. looks in and in, in uh, ergonomics, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's got it an AR fifteen style charging handle. That's cool. I think it is like so. The MPX is is. Oh, it is an AR fifteen. Yeah. Oh yeah, no it's, way! It's just sized down for nine millimeter. It's got he a smaller. Go uh, oh, I'm so tempted. It would never be non-restricted anyway, so who cares? I could use oh. this for, like, if we ever get it into, like, pistol carbine matches here, I'm totally getting one of these. Yeah. For a pistol oh. carbine course that, like, or or, uh, or match, this would be perfect. Oh, so fun. man. So what if you could just buy one? the upper? No, because you'd have to swap no. out the back of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the lower is, uh, it's got a smaller yes, uh, right. loading yeah. magazine port there on the bottom. Yeah. Magazine port? Yeah, yes. we're going we're gonna to go with that. Yep, not yeah. going to go with Magwell. I'm going to go with Magazine oh. Port. Magazine Port. Yep. There we go. Own yep. it. I like it. Let's get one. <laughs> Speaking of Magazine Ports, uh, we should talk about the uh, the Nationals because uh, <laughs> Brian's an expert at the Nationals and uh, he knows everything about uh, Magazine Ports, right? Sure. Yeah. We call them Magazine Wells, but okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Well, a well is like <laughs> something you fall down into. Yeah, that's the right. Port is like, like baby Jessica. Yeah. Yeah, a port is some place you tie a boat. So I I don't do that with I don't tie my magazines drink? in. You could you could, but you yeah, know there's beer and scotch, so no, there's no need for port. Well, no. some some AR-15 uh, magazine wells would drive you to drink. Port. Okay, we're okay. We've gone down this rabbit hole too far. I up, don't think that's everybody. possible, Brian. Look, the <laughs> deeper you get into the oh. rabbit hole, the more interesting it becomes. No. That is a. I believe that you think that. I do. I, I really do. Yes. Okay. So uh, we're going to talk about nationals. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. 
It's specifically the National Service Conditions Championship, which is this year is starting on September 25th, running through, uh, sorry, August 25th, running through September 1st. So like right around the corner. Very exciting. So it's the <sighs> National Service Condition Championship. Yep. And so, uh, what kind of stuff do you do in that? Okay, kind of so there is two days of pistol shooting. There's two days of long range precision rifle shooting, and then four days of the grand finale service rifle. Um, and I do. I it is the service rifle really is the big part of the show because the winners of service rifle get carried off the range in, in chairs on the up on the shoulders of the other competitors. Like do they really? Oh yeah, it's pretty cool. That is yeah. pretty cool, I, Trevor. Let's do that in Ipsic. Come on, man, make it make it a thing. <laughs> um, never mind, because Trevor wins a lot. I'm saying, I'm saying nothing about the idea of lifting Trevor up in a chair and me breaking my back. No, oh, nothing, no I wouldn't. Have, no. Yeah, you probably hurt <laughs> his feelings if you said that. So it's probably a good call that you didn't. Yeah, no, because yeah. I'm. Yeah, I'm not. I'm. A, I'm a jerk, but I'm not that kind of jerk. Right. So okay. Understood. Um, so yeah, the event runs uh, just a little over a week, week and a day. Uh, it's held at the Connaught Ranges um, at, in Ottawa. Um, the ranges it's hosted and run by the Dominion of Canada Rifle Association. The uh, the event is open to members of the Canadian Armed Forces, RCMP, police, and civilians. Um, Canadian Forces and RCMP will compete in their own class. So uh, hold on. So basically, it's open to everybody. It is, but because you, I, you mentioned three yeah. branches of different type of people, yeah. so military, police, and civilians. So I guess, wh- wait, does everybody and if fall you into hadn't that? Interrupted me, you would have, you would have got the best of it. <laughs> uh, poli- uh, RCMP and Canadian forces sh- shoot in their own division, provided they're using issued equipment, issued ammunition, issued firearms, issued optics. They do have the option to shoot in open class if they are shooting their own personal firearms so now do they get their own class just so they don't get embarrassed by you or is that so to keep them away from you or what's the deal it's, with that? it's to keep it, it's it's so they're competing with like equipment and it's it's there's no equipment advantage that way um now and civilians can't shoot in that class no matter what equipment they have so if uh, uh, oh, we're went, losing you dude they, there with the Narenko. Hey. Oh, hey. With iron. Hey. Uh, <laughs> hey. Oh, yeah. Yeah, hey. yeah. Hey, can you hear Uh-oh. me now? I can hear him. Just, just back up, Brian, Matthew and say the I last sentence. Fine. Okay, well, then, okay. we're better off, though, oh. Matthew, so that's fine. Oh, Let's no, no. Matthew's no, because I'm recording, so I have oh. to hear you, or it doesn't count. So, <laughs> Matthew? Just, just say that last sentence again. But but Matthew now has to edit. Oh, I'm right. not editing this. You, you, Are we? You, surely you jest. Is it still recording? <laughs> it is. Oh, yeah, we're good. It's just okay. Brian broke up is all. So just my say bad. your last sentence again. It'll be good. We'll, we'll pretend I edited it. I don't know what my last sentence was. I forget what I said. Uh, it's probably not important then. It, like, it sounded a lot like this, where you were talking and you went away and you came back. So does that at all? And to, to, I like is, that mute button. Can you use that mute <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. Okay. No, it, it just means that um, myself as a as a civilian, I am automatically in, in the uh, open class, um, no matter what I would be using. Um, okay. Even when I shot my SA-20, yeah, I'm still in open class. That, that's how that works. Um, but the RCMP and Canadian Forces can then compete against themselves in their own class. Um, in theory, people shooting in open class with, it, with whatever gun they want, with whatever ammo they want, with whatever optics, should have technically an advantage over issued, issued kit. That I get beat by a lot of military guys at, at these events, so it is how it is. Um, being in being in open class, I've still always finished behind somebody wearing uh, Canadian Forces green. green. So yeah, mm. a few a few of them anyway. So yeah. So tell me how you prepared for this. Like you've done a lot of preparation this year for it. Looks like. Um. Well, I have. Um. Let's see. Last, I've gone to nationals now i think this will be my fifth year in a row um the first three years i attended i shot just service rifle Mm -hmm. last year i just shot pistol because i needed a break from service rifle now and this year i'm going to go and shoot all three Um, and i'm also going to be staff 
So um, I'll be helping out with all the events as well, just to have things run along. Because you, strangely enough, you need staff for events. Uh, you know mm-hmm. how that is. Um, so preparation. Let's see. Outside of uh, just getting uh, generally healthier and and more physically fit, which I've not done specifically for uh, the sport. I've kind of done it. I've used the sport as a motivation to do that, but. Uh, just getting practice in shooting the course of fire with uh, with my pistol. Um, I've done at least one precision match with the Ontario Rifle Association, even though that was kind of a an adjusted precision match. Like all the distances were doubled from the national course of fire, which was a lot of fun with an AR-15 shooting against bolt guns at twice the distance I'm supposed to shoot them at at nationals. That was cool. Um, and then I got to shoot a couple service rifle matches this past weekend. Uh, a lot of dry fire practice. Um, I, um, I target. Adriel, you've talked about that on the show a couple times. Um, yeah. I've been using the iTarget system since, you know, March or something. I use it a lot more with rifle than I do with pistol. Um, just because it's a more fun way to dry fire than just simply dry firing against a target on the wall. Um, so a fair bit of that. Um, trying to get to the range as much as I can to practice. Um, but yeah, time life gets in the way. Strangely enough, my family wants me to spend time with them. My, eh. uh, my employer seems to want me to work, uh, all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's, it's tough to get everything in that I want to do. Just yeah. And loading a lot of ammo. Um, there's, uh, let's see. Pistol is about 400 odd rounds. Rifle combined is five ish hundred rounds plus practice ammo and all that. So, um, you know, it, it takes some time to do all that as well. So part of the fun. And it's the only way that's economically feasible for me to shoot because I, I can't afford to just buy factory ammo. So yeah, it's expensive. It, it is. Um, it should be subsidized. Yes. Oh, absolutely. It's a government C-fact event, right? They should with. totally subsidize you. Oh, to- yeah, totally. Yeah, that would be, yeah. Actually, it's funny because the Dominion of Canada Rifle Association used to uh, hand out ammunition. Nice. Um, that went away. Yeah, it's too bad. Well, it is, it it is, is. how it is. Well, at yeah. least then you know what ammo you're shooting. If you don't get it handed to you, you make it yourself or you buy it yourself. So that's well, this thing. is... Yeah, that's that's yeah, that that's good. Tailor and it's it to important. your rifle, so to speak, you know. Yeah, and that it, it does help you. Again, that's one of the the yeah. advantages of being an open class. Um right. you can tailor your ammunition to your firearm to get better than um bulk ammo performance. So Whoa, 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 whoa. did I miss it, something? Did you can it, you can only shoot your own ammo if you're an open class? Oh yeah. Yeah, no, if yeah, when I, as I said, the Canadian Forces RCMP, if they're shooting in that class, they're shooting it. Issue ammunition. Oh, yeah, yeah. The government has, has a bit frowns heavily on um, government weapons being fired with with hand loaded ammunition. I don't know why. I like, come on. No idea. We They've talked like, about bullets you know. going off in people's pockets earlier. So yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, fine. There's that. Right. I guess whatever. Yeah, it's yeah, it's something about the Queen's firearms blowing up. That sure. So so there are mm-hmm. there are there are there two. Main types of shooting events: pistol and, and rifle. There's um, there's three there's three events. So there's pistol, um, and it's the 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 pistol matches are similar to say PPC. Everyone sh- shoots. From, um, weapons are are not drawn live from the holster. Everything's shot from the low ready. That sort of thing at various targets. We shoot from ten, fifteen. And then there's some shooting at 25 and as far back as 35. Very limited, but but it's there. So it, um, it, it's, then, it's just stand and deliver type shooting. You're not running around yeah, and stuff. Yeah. The, okay. only, the only the only movement you get into are the for pistol is the falling falling blocks match where you have multiple teams of four guys or four shooters. Sorry, um, and they we start at like the 50 yard line and sprint to 10 and then. Then at that point, you ready your pistol, and each team of four has ten blocks they have to shoot, and whoever knocks the blocks down the fastest wins. And you just keep going on in, in heats until there's one team that finally wins. So oh, that actually sounds like fun. Ex- ex- it, you know, the- it, yeah. The falling yeah. blocks matches or falling plate matches are ridiculously fun. It's I just a imagine. So, 
Yeah, yeah. And I mean, have, that like, would that would like force you to you know your breathing, your like all that stuff. Yep. Yeah, yeah. No, it, and it it helps if you can uh, run a little bit too. Yeah. Trevor, because, Trevor, do you want to do? Know, never mind. People... No, we're not going to do that. <laughs> oh no, Trevor runs a lot, and there's no there's no small hills on the ranges. So <laughs> oh, he'd be okay. fine then. He wouldn't even blow out a calf muscle. No, Probably. service rifle would be a problem for him because there are mounds that you have to climb over. So now that wouldn't work for him. So yeah, no. it is. It is how it is. Um, then there's precision rifle, which is typically shot with bolt action rifles uh, from 200 back from 200 meters back to 800 meters. Wow. Um, yeah. So and those targets are are it's a gallery range. So there's a butt system with people downrange and behind a concrete wall and stuff and they're elevating targets either on mechanical frames or hand holding them up on sticks for people to shoot at um, with various timed exposures um that sort of thing so um like we'll get like the first match is at 200 meters and you've got two head size targets on a on a placard on a stick and that comes up for three seconds or or maybe it's five seconds and you have to engage each of those heads at in those five seconds which um, can be done efficiently with a bolt action, but it's it's tricky. You have to be really fast. I guess so. And like, yeah, and no sighters at that distance, so you have to know your dope there for sure. Yeah. Um, and then what's dope? Various, yeah. Uh, your drop. Sorry, where oh. your bullet is going to actually, what your scope setting, your sight setting needs to be to actually have the bullet hit where you want at that given distance. So. Okay. And so, then so, always, you, so that's a known distance. Then they know where they're at. Yeah, all oh. these all these matches are known distances. Yeah. Okay, so they yeah. can just oh, that's seven hundred fifty yards. That's seventeen clicks up, and with this wind, it's a uh, two clicks yes. right. Yep. Well, gotcha. yeah. Uh, well, but the trick with wind is okay. The wind right now is, is five clicks right. Oh no, it's but it changes. Clicks. Yeah, oh, it's six clicks. Oh, yes, yeah, so you're oh, always goodness. adjusting I'm, that. You're adjusting that oh, on yeah. the fly as you shoot, right? Yeah, and that's that's the the big key. With any long range sh- uh, shooting sport, is yeah. is really the wind. That's it. Um, distance is relatively easy, even on unknown distances. If you well, can I mean, use a laser or something, or gravity or, is sort or, of like a constant, right? So it it's almost it's so close to being a constant, yeah. you may as well call it that. That's yeah. right. So yeah, it's the wind that's the problem. Yes, yeah. yes, it's tricky, and um, it's as much art as science hmm. when it comes to reading the wind, and then. Once you make a, a wind estimation, you can dial in what your adjustment should be and go from there. But it's really gauging and estimating what that wind is that's yep. the trick. So, especially when it blows like left to right where you are, but – It's right to the left out of the direction direction target. Towards the target, yeah. And when you're talking a almost a kilometer in distance, that happens a lot. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's great. But yeah, even when we were shooting – the precision match the the other week at Borden, only shooting back to 500, and the wind at 500 yards it was completely opposite directions between the target stands and and where we were at. So, wow. um, it made for some interesting wind falling. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I guess so. But it's, so, it's fun. So you go out and you talk to ammo, and then you you build your dope book, right? Um, yeah. Um, and honestly, I've I've had good luck. I have a uh, program that I use. Uh, it's actually a spreadsheet, Excel spreadsheet that has worked really well for me for calculating dopes, uh, for drops. And it, I've always been, I've always tested them and I've always been within a click or two and that can be taken up just in atmospherics and, and the, the humidity of the day, the temperature of the day, that kind of thing. Yeah, so, absolutely. You're never going to get it perfect. To be within a click or two is uh, that that's fantastic. Uh, you're going to send yeah. that Excel spreadsheet my way? Uh, I can, yeah, sure. Yeah, I love Excel. Up. Excel does so much; people don't even realize. Oh, oh yeah, it's great because then you can open it up, and I can. So I, it, this was originally set up to just to do MOA for elevation and windage, and I added columns to do uh, MRADs and stuff, so I can nice. come back and forth. So and, do you just run this on your phone, and then like you're out there, you can just plug it in while you're while you're out shooting? No, I just print stuff off and oh, okay. paper. Yeah, I don't. Because you can also access the, your your well, I guess yeah. it's Google Sheets, which is the same oh, thing yeah. as Excel, basically. Or you can just put an Excel, put the file on your phone. True, and, you uh, can do with, that too. Yeah, it's, it's easy. Yeah. Lots of stuff you can do, but yeah, I don't need to yeah. do it on the fly. Yeah, okay. paper is still good. Paper, paper still works. Still good. All right, cool. Yeah, nothing wrong with paper. Just curious. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, and 
there's a lot of events that I shoot at where you're not allowed to have uh, bones. So oh. just for just because the range officers are afraid that there'll be a pocket dial for whatever, or people will be distracted by goofing around on their phone yeah, instead yeah, of doing. Yeah, makes sense. I mean, we're playing with yeah. guns. Stay off your phone. Yeah. Yeah, it just slows the match down. Yep. And but you know, people even like me, I oh, let's see what's going on Facebook. Oh, yeah, and then I'm <laughs> it's not my turn for- to shoot yet. I'm going on Facebook. Yeah, Bolivar, it's your time to shoot. Dang it. Yeah, yeah. I will yeah, like this. <laughs> it's problematic. So anyway, so and uh, the precision event is shot in partners. So you have a uh, an observer, someone with a spotting scope that that'll actually help you read wind and will actually watch the trace of your bullet. So. They'll set the spotting scope up behind the rifle itself, and by adjusting the focus so they're focusing just ahead of the target a little bit, you can actually see the wake of the bullet through the air. Yeah, it's super uh, cool and, when you get that all dialed in real good. I love yeah. watching bullets go through the air. Yeah, and then – so you're working as a team to make adjustments and, and where where to adjust. You might, you might say shade left or right based on the wind, and then you can get confirmation of where that hit happened. Yeah. Um, the precision rifle event also has um, moving targets at 400 meters, so people in butts are actually walking across the target line with uh, <laughs> with a with a target. So you have to have lead. Do you ever know who your target. shooter is as a target mover? No, sometimes yes, sometimes no. <laughs> yeah, maybe a big jumpy step if it's somebody you don't uh, want to win. <laughs> there was once at an event where the target came up backwards with some four letter words written on it because. <laughs> I, yeah, something happened. I, I deserved it. It was funny. It was all good. That's fine. And and That's I shot great. the target in the back. It was <laughs> I didn't I didn't want that face me at all. So hey, whatever yeah, whatever works. works. Um so then there's so there's two days of that. Um in theory there's also a falling plates match with that, but I've never seen them actually get to shoot that. So that would be I believe where the, all the competitors start at five hundred at the five hundred meter mound and sprint to the one hundred and then shoot down a bunch of steel plates. I, I think that's how that's set up. I, again, I've never seen them do it, and I could be missing the distances there. Um, then we get to service rifle again. The the grand. This is your. This is now. this is this what, is what I like do. the best. Um, right. All right. So that's cool. Well, thanks for coming yeah, on. Glad. To, um, I, oh, wait, oh, you want to actually talk about, about your event well, too? No, oh. I can still practice. <laughs> okay, well, I guess I'm here. I may as well. Back. Um. So service rifle at the nationals, and I'll just talk about the national course of fire because it'll be too confusing if I try to talk about other courses of fire. Uh, there's 16 matches. The distances vary from 100 meters back to 500 meters. Um, you shoot a combination of a deliberate wherein you have like 12 minutes to fire two sighters and 10 shots on score. Every time you shoot, the target goes down. Your point of impact is marked and a score marker is is put up so you can – see exactly how you did on on each of those of those individual shots um following that we have a snap target where the target comes up for uh 10 seconds you have to drop it from standing into your position either prone or or sitting um depending on the distance and fire off two shots and then stand up again and repeat that over again um then there's a rapid where you have um everything is limited to five rounds in a magazine uh, for the course of fire. It's not necessarily to do with Canadian firearms law. It, even the CF guys have to ha- just have five rounds in a mag. Um, you have 30 seconds to drop into position and fire five shots on the left-hand target, do a mag change, five shots on the right-hand target. Or if you want to shoot the right-hand target first, you can, whatever, whatever works. Um, and then following that, you have what's called a rundown. So you, you start to... 10 meters, say, behind the target line you're starting on. The target comes up for 15 seconds. You have to run up, adopt either the prone or, or seated shooting position, fire two rounds. Then the targets go down for a little while and come back up, and you have 50 seconds to move to the move 100 meters forward and, again, engage the target in whatever position um, that's, that's in that 50 seconds. And then that's repeated until finally you get to the 100-yard 100, 100 line and you're given uh, five-second snaps to shoot the target twice from standing position. And we start those each from the 200-meter start point, the 300-meter start point, and the 500-meter start point as you go through the through the day. Or the, that sounds like yeah. fun. Yeah. The, I, I really – I do like it. It's 
it's an application of fundamental marksmanship. Um, it's um, so people who have, because we have Kelly on the show, uh, people who have shot uh, maple seed events or apple seed events, it's <laughs> it directly correlates to that type of shooting. Now we don't use slings in service rifle. Um, no. If we have found that resting on a magazine is is far more efficient and practical. Um, it's also it would be uh, questionable safety wise dropping into those positions with the sling on, doing rundowns with your rifle attached to your bicep, eh, questionable. So, um, and it's a little more just practical relative to how the Canadian Forces actually works. So, um, it is it is how it is. Um, and Kelly, I think this is a shooting sport that you would really get into. You yeah, sh- I yeah I know. Yeah. It would be really good for you to round out your knowledge to, to I, just stretch yourself I in know. different directions. So yeah. I think you should do that. Um, and I'm pretty sure you have a friend who's involved in that, someone near and dear to your heart. Mm. You could, you know, guys could travel together at least, you know, yeah, split that kind of deal. So it would be, it would be good. Cool. Brian, if, if, uh, if I lived closer, I would totally take you up on that. This does actually sound like a lot of fun. Um, it it's it's not ipsic by any stretch. There's you know, no, but no. it is. No. It still sounds like a lot of fun, and it still sounds like it would be a great way to improve your fundamentals and to to really learn your rifle and and to get some good experience in shooting it. Yeah, and and that's really how this course of fire is set up. is is meant to uh, reinforce, teach, and reinforce the fundamentals of of marksmanship. Well, and um, reloading apparently with everybody having five round mags. <laughs> well, yeah, it adds to the yeah, adds to the challenge that way. Yeah. Um, uh, trust me, it can. Um, let's see. This past weekend, for example, I was I won the the rundown match at two hundred and three hundred. And I would have won the match at 500 if my if I did the mag change properly and I didn't drop my mag out after I got up and ran down range. So I didn't Oops. shoot a bunch of rounds. Because you um, didn't have them with you. I didn't have them with me. They were back. <sighs> and they were back on the other. Yeah. A couple hundred yards behind. I, I, got, <laughs> I got down to the next line. I realized what happened. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'll just clear this rifle while people are shooting. And then, then you got to keep on doing the rundown with everybody so, else. It's like, gosh so- darn it. So what happened? You 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 thought you had seated it in the mag yeah. port, and it and you didn't. I I I did not fully seat the magazine in the magazine well. I, I I I had it. I on it. Yeah, I just got discombobulated when yeah. I because you also before you before you launch to run, you should theoretically adjust your sights for the next shooting distance. Oh, okay. And and all that, that way stuff. when you it's get there, you're ready to go. Yeah, so you're yeah. actually using the correct zero. Um, it, it varies uh, considerably. I, I do recall at a match I shot last year, um, I went back to start at the 500. And for some reason, my first sighting shot was a miss, which is really odd. That never happens. And then I looked at my scope and went, oh, yeah, I've got my 100-yard dope on. Yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> at all, yeah. Let me just dial that up. Don't now, does, me. does everybody yeah. – like, I, I assume most people run optics. Do yeah. most people run optics that have quick adjust turrets, or do some people use bullet drop compensators in the reticle? Um, I think at the national level, pretty much everybody runs something they can dial up. Even the even the the, the CF guys with their elk hands, which aren't really meant to be uh, adjusted for elevation quite so much, but they can open the gate and, and they'll, sl- they'll uh, turn the dial adjustment. They'll all have pen markings on the different range elevations right. they need for them. So um, they make it work that way. Well, you have an so, elk hand, don't you? But not, you have a new I one. Do. I have a different type, a different style of elk hand that actually has adjustment dials on it. Right. Um, so, and that's worked well for me in the past. I've, I've had really good success. Yeah. Um, now this year I'm using a, a Vortex 4 to 16. Oh, okay. And as long as the adjustment dials don't slip on me, it should be just Jim Dandy fine. Is that a thing that will happen? That's the thing that happened to me on Saturday. Oh yeah. 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 It was uh, problematic. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it was a soul crushing problem. It would have but been. anyway, yeah. I was wondering why my Saturday been, felt rather well. Yeah, you were yeah. in anguish. It's like, ah. Yes. Oh, that, and that was – and see, that crushes my soul more. Knowing that you are happy by my suffering <laughs> makes me feel even worse. Yeah, no, it just, doesn't. Yeah. No, it does. It makes me feel terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Anyway, so it's it's one of those things. Luckily, I got you know like you get it. It's good to get that over with in a practice match. Yes. And and no matter what, all you can really say is, "Gee, gosh darn, that's too bad." And smile, and off you go. Well, that's and the thing. I, I mean, so, I I just well, I mean, I just went through a a, a national style type event. I mean, SummerSlam is a level three. It's oh. a pretty it's a pretty big deal. And and to see some people bomb a stage and come out the other end laughing um, oh, yeah. because they know they screwed up and it is what it is and there's literally nothing they can do about it is so much more refreshing than seeing somebody come out the other end of it dropping F-bombs and swearing and kicking things and throwing things and it's like really you, uh, you're right you've just lost a lot of money because you're not going to win the prize wait there's no money involved yeah yeah, like no, it's, it's it's disappointing to see how some people will react to that sort of thing, and I'm glad to see that you're the kind of person who's like, ah, well, is well, what it is. Uh, let, let's say I've grown as a person. Yeah, I'm not I, saying that I've never gotten sure. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Oh, I mean, yeah. we've well, all been there where we've all got been you know irritated that we we screwed something up. But you know, it's it's nice to see, and it's refreshing to see that some people realize that that's not the way it has to be. Well, no, and it, equipment failures in a match are are kind of like DQs. There are two kinds of people. <laughs> People who've had equipment failures and, and people, people who will have. So that's it. That's how it's going to work. So yeah, yeah. Anyway, and it's yeah, it is all for fun. And in the the nice thing too about going to to the national competition, um, you're kind of surrounded by people for six days or so whose total focus is on marksmanship and excellence and that sort of thing. Yep. So it's a really good environment that way. Mm -hmm. um, you tend to just talk about that kind of stuff, and uh, it's it's really good. Um, there's not much in the way of egos from that's good. people who are there. So yeah, it's yeah. it's well, you know, it's it's people who are shooters. Yeah. Shooters tend to be pretty pretty good people to hang around with tend for the most to. part. Yeah, tend to. There's yeah. exceptions to every rule, but of you know, course, yeah, it's it's all good. That's cool. So any any other questions, guys? Well, when well, is it going to come to New Brunswick? When can I shoot it here? As soon as New Brunswick <laughs> comes to cannot. Yeah, that's not how that works. Um, I think the Royal New Brunswick Rifle Association runs a service rifle match every year. I think yeah. so. Yeah. Well, I don't want to do it every year. I want to do it like a couple of times a year. Or like, Oh, then you – well, Nova Scotia has yeah. uh, several. Yeah. That's a long way to go. I – you know, dude, I can't – then you know what? If you want service rifle where you are – you know Started. the solution. Yeah. <laughs> Make it happen. Uh, well, the, you know, the, well, no. Let's see. Uh, Trevor's range doesn't have a gallery system, but no. I mean, you I can make it. I mean, base gauge sound may have that sort of setup. Yeah, I, I don't know if they're open for. I think um, I don't know. I am yeah, not I am. going to speak on no. something I know nothing about. Hey, would you look Strange. at that again? That's refreshing. <laughs> well, <laughs> Weird. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, well look, I got to say that was that was fascinating. I, I I've known a little bit about service conditions. I used to listen to your podcast and stuff, so I know a little bit about it. But it, you don't every listen time, to anybody's podcast. I, don't I, I used to listen to yours. Oh. Okay. <laughs> used right. to. Okay. Good. good well, good. you don't. I mean, you don't do service conditions radio anymore. So. No, I do have another podcast. Well, I listened because of the other reasons. Anyway. <laughs> I, I, what I'm trying to say is this sounds like a fun sport and I wish I could be more involved in it and so what I'm trying to say to the listeners is if you have the opportunity to go check this out I strongly suggest you do mm -hmm. because I think yep. you will be pleased and, and you will enjoy yourself and perhaps find yourself a new way to shoot your guns I mean let's be honest we don't have very many reasons um, besides hunting to, to be out shooting our guns especially our restricted guns i mean i hope nobody's hunting with them <laughs> um don't hunt with your restricted firearms this is a public service announcement um, or don't get caught anyway don't, whatever it, just at, don't at the very least don't get caught just don't do it but well, i mean we have ar-15s yeah, yeah we we have ars we have we have handguns and, and i found a, a good reason to have handguns now and that's ipsic get out and shoot some ipsic and have some yeah. fun but i still don't have a really good reason to have my ar yeah, I shoot a three-gun match once a year, but for those of you who live in Ontario or live close by to where the service condition stuff goes on, you've got an AR and you want a really good reason to own it and to continue to own it and to, to, to use it, what it was designed for, go get involved with this. It sounds like fun. Yep. Um, there's And there's a pretty active with service rifle out in BC with the 
British Columbia Rifle Association. Cool. Uh, they'll do serv- uh, at least one service rifle match a year, maybe maybe more. Um, and there's also Service CQB, which is in Ontario and other uh, BC and Alberta's some, got uh, it. Yeah. Alberta's got it, and that sort of thing. Where it's the fundamentals. It's the same fundamentals of service rifle, but it's shot at a much shorter distance um, with you know smaller smaller scoring zones and that sort of stuff. So it still takes yeah. um, the s- same kind of basic skills. Sounds like fun um, as well. Yeah. And if you've got your maple seed patch, you should get out and shoot some service rifle. You should right. stretch your legs. Totally should. Well, Kelly. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, I guess it's <laughs> me. But in September or October, depends on which match you're shooting there, Matthew. Or, of course. I am coming Adriel, to the September You'll one. get yours. Yeah. Well, it's September 4th. 30th, October 1st. Yeah, Anyways. The September one. Yeah. Hey, um, Kelly, while I've got you uh, here and I can put you on the spot, um, no. has anything come up with um, known distance for um, We're Maple working Seed on it. Yet? Okay. Yeah, we are working on it. Yeah. So, maybe something in your area. Very in your area. Okay. Very. Imp- cool. uh, ooh. ooh. I'm, all, I'm all excited. Yeah. Not in an inappropriate way, but I'm all excited. <laughs> Yes, we were, we had, literally right before we got on the air, I got a message from someone about that. So, okay, cool. Um, yeah. Now, now, Adriel, you had mentioned that there's service rifle at your club in Alberta, correct? Yeah. Now, yeah, so uh, it wouldn't be your butt system. Uh, it's yeah. hundred yard only, so it would be like uh, service rifle ish, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Service rifle inspired. Yeah. And and working and that's something that can be done. I mean, um, we have. The keys for service rifle really are, are time limited exposures. Um, same with precision and the, the pistols have all, it's all shot under a part time. You have so many seconds to get your rounds off. Um, so being fast, being the first one done, usually not what you want to do because that means you've gone too fast and sacrificed some accuracy, but you can do the same thing with, um, just timing with whistle blasts. Start on the whistle blast, stop on the next whistle blast, that kind of thing. So, uh, you can you can mimic that stuff for systems that don't have a butt system because butts are fairly expensive and complicated to set up. So um, not a lot of civilian ranges have them at all. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. and but it is kind of neat to be downrange and hearing bullets going over your head. Well, you I can do that. Took me a while. Imagine. To just, yeah, it's yeah. After a while, it's pretty normal. But yep, it was kind of freaky the first couple times. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Don't want it. Yeah. Yeah. All our listeners cool. should go check out a service rifle or service pistol or CQB match near them. Uh, why don't we head on to listener feedback? Matthew, do you want to take the first one here from James B? Do I ever? Driving through Kuchiba Kuga Jibijigab Kuchiba Kuchiba Yeah, I know. Kuchiba Kwak. National Park. <laughs> and I saw this sign. Firearms must be kept in vehicles unloaded and dismantled. And there was a laminated sheet of paper saying that it's okay to drive through until March 2018. What the heck? All right, I'm pretty sure you can hunt in Grossmore National Park in Newfoundland. What's wrong with this park superintendent? Really need to dot those I's and cross those T's. I travel this road all the time with firearms. Glad I never stop and use any of this park service. It is allowed during hunting season. So... Hunting, so this is, this looks like this is a uh, cut and paste from something. He says, uh, hunting, firearms and hunting are only permitted during hunting season in Grossmore National Park. If you are carrying a firearm uh, through to another destination, it must be unloaded, securely encased, and kept in your vehicle. Firearms include slingshots, bows, BB guns, crossbows, and paintball guns. Hunting carries serious offenses in the National Park. Fireworks are also not permitted. See moose reduction program, blah, 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 carries on. And he says, what do you think? I also hear there are three more dead uh, whales off of Cape Britannia, shot in the face with a 17 HMR. Who do we know on vacation? I wonder how expensive the scotch is. I think he's talking about Trevor in vacation in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. But um, as for firearms in national parks, that's just the norm, I thought. Um, anytime I've driven through a national park, I've seen that sign. And that's always been sort of um, the, 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 the dorm. If, if you're not hunting, I mean, you can hunt in some national parks, but if you're not, the firearm has to be unloaded and cased. 
So mm-hmm. that's that's what it is in New Brunswick all over the place. Firearm needs to be unloaded and cased unless you're hunting. Um, because otherwise you're in a resort of wildlife and the park rangers consider you hunting and you'll get fined for poaching. So I think that's just sort of status quo for for national parks, I, I guess. Yeah, and, and I would assume there's not recreational bush shooting allowed in national parks, right. I'm guessing. It seems like since it's a park, it's a place where humans would congregate, so probably not the best right. location for yeah. recreational shooting. Just yeah, that'd be my from guess. a safety perspective, safety, whatever. Yeah. Like no, that. they've got their rules. We got to follow them. Um, yeah. And as for the dead whales off of uh, Cape Breton, shot in the face of seventeen HMR, yeah, that was totally Trevor. He's got videos. It'll be posted up later. <laughs> I'm kidding. It didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. All right. Like the next one here. Good luck from buddy. Scott. <laughs> uh, this it's, is it... regarding uh, episode 199 SKS. That was a while ago. Yeah, Just, he's probably, hey, he's not probably everybody going listens. Not everybody listens right away. You know, you got to let people. You know, they listen at their own rate, and that's why we get backlogs of email sometimes. That's fine. We don't mind. <laughs> Hi, all. Just recently found you via Adriel's website. Oh. I'm always happy to pass time listening to gun positive talk. I'm an old radio guy, so I do actually listen. No use for TV. Second one I listened to was last night with Hitch- uh, Hickok45 and Son John. Great guy. Can't get enough. First one was on Millsurps. Enfield number one, uh, number four, Mark 1, Malt B44. Hangs on the wall, but also shites, uh, shoots nice, tight groups. <laughs> it shites a nice, tight group. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that works, too. Uh, I've had Garands, 98Ks, VZ24s, Lumen AG42s, three different marks of Enfield revolvers, a gorgeous Inglis Mark I high power, Bren, also Inglis, Sten, and once, many years ago, an SKS. <laughs> Now then, I have lived through the years, uh, I have through the years sold everything except for the Enfield, and yes, like many, if not most collectors and shooters, so far lived to regret every sale. Back uh, to the Millsurp episode, my lord, when I heard the negative mention of the old SKS, it hurt my old feelings. You see, as the regular paychecks came to an end and the pension checks started to show up, I realized the time had come that my wish list would have to shrink. Now I gave this some very deep thought and reflection and came to the conclusion that an SKS is in excellent shape, would be affordable. Let's face it, the days of pulling a war-ravaged Enfield out of a barrel for 10 bucks is just a distant memory. Lucky to find a decent one for under 500 bucks these days. And the ammo, darn tricky to find good stuff, and the price. Wow. So have I justified the, the SKS decision yet? <laughs> oh, I know they don't have the battle history of the others, but they were at least designed during my dad's war. And you know, those Russians might not go for pretty, but they sure have the ability to produce functional. And it's kind of like dating an ugly girl or guy. After a while, they start looking like shining stars. Well, I think well, after a beer is what he meant to say there. Or many of them. (laughs) Uh, Well, there we have my new SKS. Lever Arms in Vancouver seems to have no shortage of them. And for an extra few bucks, you can find some real nice ones. Brought one home on a Friday evening, took pictures, and then Saturday morning, tore it down for a good cleaning and inspection. Although it had already been clean as a kid ready for Sunday school. This Carbine, produce, pr- pronounced carbine, not carbine. Thank Sorry, you. To, thank you. That one thank those, you. <laughs> <laughs> I was married to a grammar queen once. Did not show one small single mark of ever having been cycled. I swear the lands and grooves could slice ham. The stock is laminated, indicating arsenal refurbishment. And the receiver cover is stamped as such. But I swear this thing is 100% pristine. I posted some pics on Adriel's Hunting Gear Guy SKS review page. Wouldn't hurt my, my feelings if you took a peek. As for ammo, I'm terribly tempted by the price of all that surplus stuff and may in fact go purchase a can or two, you know, for SHTF scenario. Although I doubt if uh, it ever does develop uh, it won't in 
Uh, it won't be in my lifetime, but 1,500 rounds sure looks impressive, doesn't it? Hmm. No, for the first bullets down the tube, I dropped next year's vacation fund on a box of <laughs> Hornady, uh, I think he's saying SSTs. Uh, having rambled just a little bit, it's time to get to the point. I was an LD trucker most of my life with no one to talk to all day, and then some fools hired me to drive buses, and I haven't shut up since. <laughs> I was so pleased to hear uh, that one of you bought not one, but two Russian works of art in the SKS. Geez, I suppose if I had placed that last sentence first, this could have been much shorter. <laughs> Enjoy listening to y'all banter and pass good things along. Thank you, Scott in the wilds of Langley, BC. That was a great email, Scott. I, I liked how you kind of dragged us all over the place in that one, and it was it was <laughs> it was a fun journey. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, no, I, I mean. Ever since that Millsurps episode, Trevor's sort of turned over a, a, a new leaf and has sort of come to appreciate the SKS. So, um, I like mine. I, I, I like the SKS at like as it is as a two hundred dollar uh, fun utility rifle. Right. I still have no use for one, but that's only because, I mean, if we didn't have caliber restrictions, I know I say this every time this comes up, but if we didn't have caliber restrictions, I would have one, and it would be so much fun to have and play with out in the woods, but we've got stupid caliber restrictions, I've literally got no use for one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Because yeah. they're so fun. They are. Yeah, I've shot SKSs before. I mean, the length of pull on them needs to be <laughs> adjusted for a lanky guy like myself, but... Um, they're compact. Yes, yes, they are. Which is why I put one of those Tapco uh, collapsible stocks on them. Trevor loves that. <laughs> uh, okay, I have a question that comes to mind when talking about Russian mill serps and caliber restrictions in New Brunswick. Yeah. Why are there no firearms in Canada in 5.45? What's 5.45? It's the current Russian military ammunition. So you'd really? get that in uh, you'd get that in the AK seventy four, but we don't have those. No, but why? Like, there's a the Canadian uh, the rifle you're looking at right now, which is the CZ eight five eight. Yeah. Why don't they chamber that in uh, five four five? Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, five four yeah. five would be less than two to three, wouldn't it? Be like two to two. To do one, yeah, maybe two it is zero. a little smaller. Yeah, letter bullets. Yeah. Now, what kind There's of pro- what kind of case does it have? Like, how much powder is this thing running? Uh, it's for for general practice, it's slightly less powerful than five five six. Oh, all right. Well, then I'm just gonna stick with five five six. That's okay. Yeah, but cheap oh. surplus. Oh, right, 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 right. Back to the cheap surplus. I love this. Yeah, yeah. cheap surplus. Yeah. I'm in for cheap surplus. Let's get this then. Can you get this in? I did. <laughs> Can you bring in some AK seventy so cool. fours and some yeah. five four five? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, Do there that. has to be other rifles that are chambered in this. Why is there nothing in the Canadian market for this? I don't get that. Hmm. You raise a good point. Oh, oops, that was an accident. Yeah, that was an accident. Oops. Yeah. Right, we Just one of those things that popped in my head. Uh, I like I, I, maybe somebody who's a listener can answer that question for me. All right. I don't hear anybody, cool. so we'll have to wait. <laughs> I've I've got time. Not a big <laughs> we're just gonna sit here until a listener answers. No, we're not. Quiet. All right. If you want to listen, if we're you want to answer us, send an email to slamfireradio at gmail dot com. Do we have any iTunes reviews? Nope. Nope. Uh, I check with Stacy. We did not. Thank you no anyway, Stacy, for checking because you're the best. Yes. Yeah. Uh, any shout outs? Um, I have one. I just wanted to say thank you very much to Brian Sheets for putting us up and also, well, um, not just Brian, but also Jason and Red and Cindy uh, for coming out and saying hello. So it was great to see you guys and thanks for everything. I've got a shout out to the guy at the uh, SummerSlam uh, banquet. So I'm sitting there eating because... <clears throat> uh, because anyway, then there's a line going up to, for people getting their food, and somebody in line, <clears throat> excuse me, don't know who he is, just catches my eye, looks over, and says, "So, is there any corn?" <laughs> 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 so, so I had to let him know that no, there was no corn, and that I was terribly disappointed that there was no corn. So I had I had corn for supper tonight. Hmm. Lucky you. Apparently. 
<laughs> I didn't. It didn't make me think of you at all. No, well, that's good. It, yeah. No. <laughs> all. Awesome. Great. We have uh, two new Patreons. We have Mark H at four fifty four. Mm-hmm. For the Chevy, right? 454 Big Block? Yes, I think it's uh-huh. a Pretty car, sure. work, car show. Yes. And the next one was Robert G at $5, which I think is 500 maybe 500 Nitro? 500, 500 Smith & Wesson? Yeah. Uh, 50 BMG? No, that would be $50, right? Yeah. yeah, that'd be $50. Yeah, whoever whoever signs up for the 50 BMG is going to be... Uh, we're going to have to send them two stickers. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, ah, yeah, you know, for fifty, yeah. probably three. Three. Yeah. What well, kind yeah, of don't be dipping like, too whatever, deep into candy. our profit funds? Here. Yeah, you just on. spend his entire fifty bucks on stickers. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> That's not how you get ahead. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, awesome. Uh, finally, please join one or more of our national firearms associations, such as the CCFR, the CSSA. It's important to support them. Get out shooting. Uh, do take a take a black badge course. Uh, go shoot a maple seed challenge that they've got up on their Facebook uh, page. Uh, take on a three gun match at a local club. Bust some clays. Get out and do some little bit of hunting, or uh, get out and do some long range. Or hey, why don't you go try out one of those uh, service rifle matches? I hear they're fun too. Check I us guess. out on Gun Owners of Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I guess <laughs> maybe. Uh, uh, like us on Facebook. We're at 1,730 likes. And uh, don't forget to give us feedback uh, to make the show better. We've got that survey up, and we'll have it up for, oh, I don't know, like a couple weeks or something like that until we get enough uh, feedback to make some decisions. Um, uh, any final thoughts, gentlemen? Well, we're going to do what we want anyway, but we want and the listeners to think that they have a say in what goes on here. Yeah. 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 What you guys are looking for is good ideas, and if you agree with them, you're going to do them. If That's right. you get a bunch of feedback for stuff you don't want to do, you're not we're going not, to do it. We're not obligated in any way to uh, – No. Yeah, and, no. And if, if it takes a lot of effort – Oh, like that's any, heck no. That, no yeah, we, that's <laughs> – yeah, probably not. Oh, wait. I might be talking about my own podcast. That, yeah, that might not work. <laughs> well, why don't you plug your podcast since my, you're on here? Uh, anyway. It seems wrong for me to plug Modern Rifle Radio. I mean, it just, you know, it seems kind of a cheap thing. I was going to give a shout out to my co-host on Modern Rifle Radio, but the <laughs> lead host blew right by me. So I, I can't shout out the guys. That's just not going to happen. Yeah, so. It's too late now. It's too late. Yeah. I missed my chance. You did. I should have spoken up, but I no. didn't. No, you complain about it now. This is the right way to do things. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody has to be that guy. <laughs> so it's going to be me. I'm the one. Yeah, <laughs> Modern Rifleman Radio. Go listen. Yeah. <laughs> we have shows occasionally. There randomly. We, We're, we don't demand the, the commitment from the listeners that other shows that come out regularly do. You know, it's what are you our, saying? Well, I'm just saying like ours is like a pleasant good. surprise. Every yeah, when it comes out. Once it's like, in a well, while, Never know. Yeah. I didn't know they're still doing that. Yeah. You're, you guys are getting more regular. We were, and then we're not. And it's you know, fluxes. Yeah, whatever. It is how it is. I have to go to Nationals next week, so I, yeah. That's where my focus is right now. And work so that I can actually get a few days off to go shoot Nationals. Okay. So, yeah. You know how that is. Adulting Indeed. happens. Uh, yeah. It's horrible. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good night, folks. Good night, folks. Good night, folks. Good night, folks. So if you have any comments or questions for the show, please send an email to slamfireradio at gmail.com. Now go grab a gun and shoot something. When the talking is over, it's time to get a gun.